The following show contains views and opinions that may not be suitable for all audiences. Audience discretion is advised. Welcome to Thespian Talk, everybody. I am your host, Gomer the Ranting Thespian, and my co-host this week is The Cat. Hello, everyone. Yes, and uh, Holly was supposed to be here this week, but uh, work is bogging her down, so she couldn't make it, unfortunately. Um, but so it's just the two of us this week. It's going to be interesting, just to say the least. This last week has been interesting, depending on what, you know, well, for us nationally here in the United States, we had the elections, you know, the those midterm elections where, um, yeah, a lot of people in this country apparently vote against their own self-interest because Republicans now have control of Congress. That's okay. They've proven that they're incapable of actually doing work. So um, hopefully, once again, they won't get anything done because if they're allowed control, it's it's going to be really bad for everybody. So hopefully, they just keep on doing what they've been doing, which is nothing. Yeah, nothing except. Uh, oh God, I know they're already looking at bringing a lawsuit against Obamacare to the Supreme Court, and and there's already churches. I read about this today. There's already churches out there that are coming out and blatantly saying, "Hey, you know what? We're a tax-free organization, but um, you know, never mind that pesky little law that says we're not allowed to enter the political ring. We're just going to blatantly do it instead of just, you know, you know, playing it off to the side, like, oh, we're not really doing it, you know, you know, trying to play sly and 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 secretive like that. No, they're coming out and saying, no, we are telling our people, you go vote for the Republicans, or you, or God is going to smite you and send you to hell." You know, that sort of thing. Lovely. Oh, yeah, very, very lovely. So – and so far, the IRS has done nothing when legally what should be done is they should be audited and their tax-exempt status should be revoked because that whole separation of church and state, you know, the thing that, that Republicans tend to not like. Yeah, that, that thing that's supposed to define our country that really doesn't. Yeah, which is a pain in the ass. Oh, and then – and then for me, I, I watched General Hospital. I'm, I'll be talking about this a lot more on the Poor Charlie podcast, but it was a good week. It, if, if you were to start watching it, would, watching General Hospital at all, it would have to be this week because it gets pretty good. Holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but um, – and then the Series 8 finale of Doctor Who. Kat has not watched it, so I won't spoil anything. I'm honestly not a person who cares about spoilers. I really don't. I never have, and I never will. <laughs> But um, but yeah, they killed off one of they killed off one of my favorite characters, and she had only been in like two episodes, including this one. And it's like no, no, they they had to, be, because the 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 master is a bitch and a bastard, all in the same body, uh, you know. <laughs> a mastered. There we go, a mastered. <laughs> Wait, who did they kill? Um, um. One of the kids or something? No, no. Remember? Okay, somebody from the fiftieth. Uh, um, um, Osgood. Wait, they kill off Clara? No, 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 Osgood. As in the geeky girl with, with the glasses. Oh, oh, I see. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm like, that doesn't make sense. That doesn't make sense. Oh, yeah. Okay, sure. Yeah. And, I mean, and, they gotta kill somebody, but not somebody you really like, you know? Yeah, I know. And, and I realize it helped with the story and everything, and, and... And, of course, they played the trope – oh, I forget the name of the actual trope, but, you know, when the doctor, during an adventure, if he ever invites somebody, you know, in the middle of an adventure, then that person is basically, you know, going to be dead. Oh, yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, that happens. And I and I saw it coming, too. And it's like the moment I saw that, I'm like, oh, God, she's going to die. And I was right. <laughs> Damn. Oh, but there, there are some good things. You, you really – when you when you have the chance, you should you should go and watch it. When you have the chance. But you, from what you told me, uh, you've been marathoning something else this weekend. <laughs> oh, yeah. In uh, in preparation for the next Hobbit movie coming out, I've actually been spent the weekend with my friends marathoning the extended edition of Lord of the Rings. Because I, I just got the extended edition of Desolation of Smaug. Uh, so I kind of like wanted to get ready and like marathon everything before um, Battle of Five Armies comes out. Yeah. Ah, they managed to turn one book into three movies. I've, I've yeah. seen them do, you know, one book into two. I think Return of the Kings, I think, is definitely one of them. Uh, the last Harry Potter book, uh, forget Deathly Hollows, I think it is. 
Deathly Hallows, yeah. Yeah. And for some reason, the last Twilight movie got broken up into two movies. I, I don't know why. And um, mm. Hunger Games. Oh, really? Yeah. The uh, Mockingjay move is going to be two movies. Wow. Yeah. I mean, a lot of stuff goes into it, but I don't think that much goes into it. Yeah. It's just, there's some, I think, I don't remember who exactly originally said it, but there are some books, some some other forms of media that might work well as a television series. Because, you know, like, especially like big novels like, you know, Lord of the Rings or what have you. That if you're going to adapt the stories, it might be better to do it on television instead of, like, movies and shit. Because the problem movies, is... Hmm? The problem is, is that nobody has the budget for that. Like the fact that that Game of Thrones exists, it's wholly unique in that it is an extremely large budget fantasy show. It's possibly the only one. Yeah, and the thing is, I mean, I mean, we got you've got all these larger companies like Disney. I'm pretty sure Disney could afford it, even with them pumping money into Marvel and and getting the Marvel movies going up off the ground and their latest. In their latest uh, Disney animated canon movie or what have you, I'm pretty sure they've got money to spare that they could do something like this. J just give it to Disney or one of their subsidiaries. Just say, here, do no, this. No, don't ever give it to Disney. Don't whatever it, to it Disney. is, don't give it to Disney. What, what, what they They'll got... ruin everything. They, they, all Disney cares about is making money. You can't give them something you love. But, but see, it, here's another side of the argument. If you give them something good and, and they know they'll make money from it, how much are they really going to ruin it? I, I give you into the woods, but nevertheless, um, <laughs> it, it's oh. like something you couldn't give them something like Lord of the Rings because Lord of the Rings is too dark. Hmm. They would dumb it like it, it's sort of like what they're going to do with Into the Woods. They have to lighten it up and dumb it down a little bit in order to sell it to the audience that a Disney movie is going to attract. So there's a lot of stuff like especially a lot of high fantasy series that, yeah, sure, Disney could afford it. But they would be the wrong people to produce it. Yeah, well, don't they have subsidiaries that could actually do that too? And then Disney could just say, here, take this money. You guys do what you do. Our name is not officially on it. It's you. I don't think it's we'll Disney. Their name is officially on everything if they want the profits for it. That's It's just how Disney works. Ah, good point. Good point. Ah, damn. There's somebody out there that can afford it, damn it. <laughs> yeah, like maybe something else, but like if they had tried to do like Hobbit or something as a as a TV show, it wouldn't have worked, I don't think. Yeah, but you know, somebody somewhere has got to have the budget for it. Whoever is producing Game of Thrones definitely has it, apparently. <laughs> HBO, get right on that. HBO, there you go. That's where your that's where your good stuff comes from. HBO. Or at least mostly good stuff, because, uh, oh god, was it, it It was this past week when Lena Dunham came out with all of that stuff, isn't it? Oh dear. Oh, that that is something I'm not going to touch right now. We, I, I think I'll save that for constructive deconstruction, but, um, yeah, and you and Josh probably touched on, on what the fuck at some point, if you haven't already. Mm, we haven't yet. Oh boy. I, I see that coming. <laughs> I really do. Oh, but uh, anyway, um, with all of that out of the way, do you have any shout outs for this week? Because I kind of don't. I don't either. Oh, no. This is like my third week in a row. I don't second or third week in a row where I don't have a shout out. What is wrong with me? <laughs> You're catching the cat doesn't have shout out syndrome. Oh, no. <laughs> you better get yourself fucking vaccinated, man. I know, man. What 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 would what would be shot into me? I mean, and would it cause know. anything? You don't know. <laughs> if I knew, maybe I would have shout outs, but I don't. <laughs> <laughs> oh lordy, but but yeah. So we'll go ahead and hit into our news. Oh lordy, 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 lordy. Last week, a California jury rendered a $16.5 million verdict against a dating site for allegedly sharing user data with more than 1,000 third parties, which. You know, they, they share user data anyway, but I think it depends on the data. Dating profiles are always somewhat embarrassing, but the data in question was particularly sensitive to users, their STI status. Positive Singles build its site as 100% anonymous. Ah, ha, 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 ha. That's there, there that is. With a target audience of single adults wishing to escape the stigma associated with many STIs, users may select from a drop-down menu of STIs, several of which are bafflingly fully treatable. So what went wrong? 
Unbeknownst to many users, Positive Singles' parent company, Successful Match, shared allegedly shared user data with hundreds of its other dating sites, which include illustrious titles such as Rit Rich Date Busty, Equestrian Cupid, Nudist Friends, and according to one report, Herpes in Mouth. I, 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 I vetted it. I, I looked at it. Uh, the, 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 I don't have the immediate come up from the site where I got this from, but I don't think this is satire. And what's really bad is the, the equestrian cupid. What is the first thing that comes to your mind when you see equestrian cupid? Um, I, I think a bunch of people, uh, my little pony fans trying to find other, my little pony fans. <laughs> Okay, see, so, see, your first thought was a lot lighter and softer than mine, because mine was a whole, total different direction there. Um, but no, it it is it, it is uh, basically a site for people who like horses, not in that way, you know. <laughs> they really like horses. Yeah, uh, but not those people. No, 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 no. Uh, the state jury found positive singles guilty of fraud, malice, and oppression in a case where the plaintiff's profile showed up on a number of sites, allegedly misrepresenting his race, sexual orientation, HIV status, and religion by exporting his dating profile to niche sites associated with each trait. As the lawyer in the case explained, the plaintiff is not black, gay, Christian, or HIV positive, and was unaware that the defendant was creating websites that focused on such traits that would include his profile, thus indicating that he was all of these things and more. So, it seems like, ooh, what, is it, what is it, positive singles, they're doing what a lot of other companies, I'm, I'm sure a lot of other companies do, and they share and sell information to other sites. And some of that information, you know, is, it's, you know, like, like your profile picture or something. Okay, whatever. Um, but in this particular case, they, they say it's 100% anonymous. That would tell me that, you know, you could put it on there and it stays there. It doesn't get shared everywhere else. It's like that trip to Vegas. Yeah. Whatever happens on uh, – except on positive singles, whatever happens on po positive singles doesn't necessarily stay on positive singles, apparently. It, it, it turns you into a black uh, Christian uh, HIV positive person on another website. Yeah, apparently. Just – what the hell, guys? I mean I, mean, I, mean, I, I use – I sometimes will go screw, you know, not screw around, but uh, scroll around on OK Cupid because you know, hey, you, you never know who you're gonna find and what 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 uh, things are gonna be found. But I would not be surprised if OK Cupid took like say my user picture or whatever and used it as an advertisement. They probably wouldn't because I'm too goddamn ugly for it. But mm. I wouldn't see them. I wouldn't. I would not put it past them. And something that's publicly available to somebody who is not on the site who could just click on. That's one thing. I, I can understand that, but I have a feeling that the, these uh, uh, these STIs, you know, that the information that you put in there, that's not meant to be shared with anybody that's not on the site, and there and therefore, you know, going after positive singles like this, yeah, I, I can I can agree with that, you know, go after them and and you know legally kick their ass because that's just no, you don't do that. It's definitely a violation of your privacy. Mm-hmm. Uh, just wow. <laughs> uh, but and besides, it, it, it kind of took me a minute to get the joke of positive singles. Yeah, yeah. They tested positive. Oh god, that's terrible. That is. It's like really. I mean, I mean, this is the same. This does come from the same same company that does give us Equestrian Cupid. And rich date busty. Gee, I wonder what kind of fight kind of women I would find there. Oh, I wonder. <laughs> oh, and uh, and that's the thing though. If it's rich date busty, is it only for rich busty women? Or is it rich men finding busty women? It could be. Because rich. if so, I'm signing up. <laughs> well, well, I'm. I'm not even going to touch that one because that would – that's – okay, I'm moving on from the awkward. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and this one is out of uh, Tracy – I don't remember the state, but it'll, it'll probably pop up. Uh, a Tracy high school student is in hot water after omitting the words under God from his reading of the Pledge of Allegiance. Derek 
Garadina, 17, says he's been given detention and docked points after omitting the reference to God, and the school district is standing by its decision. Tracy Unified School District says it respects everyone's religious beliefs, or lack thereof, but say if you're going to lead the school in the pledge, you better say it in the traditional way. Well, technically he was, because it was originally written without under God. That technically is the traditional way. And then some Christians got, you know, wanted to use the Red Scare Booga Booga Man and say, hey, you know, we're, we're going to show them that we are a Christian nation, even though we're not, and, and put under God in there, put and God we trust on the money and everything. And it's just because of communism. Yes, the red, yes, communism. Like I said, the big red Booga Booga Man. Uh, our di Garadina says he went along with his speech and debate class assignment to lead West High School in the pledge. Personally, I wouldn't say the pledge at all because I'm not necessarily patriotic and I'm not religious, he said. Everyone in the class is required to do it 12 times a year, and he read the 1954 version his first two times. But on his third, he felt it was necessary to remove the line under God from his reading, simply skipping over it and reciting the pledge as it was before the 1954 amendment during the Cold War. Garadina says he's agnostic, but, learned his, but then learned his grade had been docked. I think I have a low C now from doing other speeches, but it's a very large point value, he said. Says that he was warned if he omitted the phrase again, he'd been in trouble. And he did, and now he has detention. <sighs> Fucking school, man. You know what? It, uh, that, that, that cannot be legal. It can't be. It shouldn't be. And if it is, I want to go slap whoever it was that allowed it to become legal. Because it's just, uh God This damn. is clearly the school board can't even get their shit together. And this is going to have to go beyond the school board. Like, this is going to have to go to court or something. Yeah, uh, let's see. Uh, da -da 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 -da. The Supreme Court has ruled students do not have to participate in reciting the pledge, but it is not a violation for it to be led in schools. In fact, the California oh, – okay, it's in California. The California Education Code requires patriotic exercises, and the pledge fulfills that requirement. So the, it requires patriotic exercises. If you're not saying the pledge, what other patriotic patriotic exercise would that be? Because I, I, my, my mind is in a dark place, and this could go into very dark territory if I'm not careful. But, you know, just what other patriotic places would there be? You could sing the national anthem. There you go. And I don't think the national anthem has any reference to uh, God or anything. Or religion, I don't think. It's been a while since I've, you know, listened to or read the lyrics to it, but I don't think there's any indication of God in there, so that's an alternative. But what if this guy can't sing? You know, saying the pledge is a lot simpler, and, you know, again, if you want to be tradi traditionalist and in, in, in say how it was traditionally done, well, before 1954, it was traditionally without under God. And there you go. Ah, there, there's just... Ay, yeah, damn. Uh, and, of, and of course, they, they do they do have a quote from a Vietnam veteran and high school parent who says, uh, if you don't want to say in God, don't get up there and recite the pledge, because if you're going to recite the pledge, recite it correctly. Sorry, if you're assigned something for school that your teacher is making you do, you don't exactly get to not do it. Yeah. Now – they also say that student, if students didn't want to do the assignment, there was an alternative offered. Uh, given that choice, that uh, you know they don't say what the alternative is, but eh. and and oh, this line: a public forum where you're going to represent the school is not a place where you can voice a controversial issue and force that on other people. Oh, like you're for you're, you're trying to force this kid into saying the pledge the way you want him to say it, the way you think it should be said. By lowering his grades, giving him detention, and basically trying to bully him into saying "under God" in the pledge. That—that's how I'm reading it. Am I? Am I off? It, it's that Christian persecution of um, it. If if somebody else does it, it's it's them being over dramatic, and it's and it's them enforcing their ideals on other people. But if it happens to them, then they're being persecuted, and oh, so course. fucking ridiculous. Help, help, they're being oppressed, except they're not. You know, it's it's like that pie chart where it's not 100% Christian. It looks, you know, the Christian part of the pie chart looks like Pac-Man for a little bit. And there's one such iteration that, that has the Christian part saying, help, help, we're being oppressed, when they're still the majority. Yeah. Now I'm just going to put it right out there right now. You Christians out there who are listening to this think you might be being oppressed? You're not. 
Trust me. Chinese, you know, the, China, they might be oppressing Christians. I don't know. I've heard that they are, but given things in the world, I don't know. One of the Koreas might. I don't know. You know, maybe the Middle East might be. Who knows? But it's not happening here. Your Christian rights and your Christian principles are fine as long as they are not harming other people and forcing other people into your beliefs. It's really that simple. Uh, but speaking of Christians, the, 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 the biggest holiday for Christianity has come around again. Well, the biggest holiday that's been commercialized that came – well, okay, it didn't come from Christianity. The name may have, but the actual – it's Christmas, goddammit. <laughs> you come... can't even get through that sentence. <laughs> no, I cannot. <laughs> but uh, but that's coming around again, and unfortunately they're they're doing more and more to push out the kill a turkey to, um, to, to uh, celebrate the fact that we stole land from the Indians uh, day coming around again. And – one thing before I get to this news story, I, I went to a Walmart the other day because that's where I had to go to get some stuff. Not on my dime, though. So somebody else is the poor sap putting money into it. And I noticed their card section, like at the very front. Uh, they had like maybe three or four uh, sections of Christmas cards already. This was like barely after Halloween. And then right next to it, there's like this little, little skinny section that is just Thanksgiving cards. It looked to me for all the world like, yeah, Christmas, Christmas. Oh, yeah, Thanksgiving. So a little, a little, it's like it's like giving Thanksgiving a little pat on the head. Oh, you exist. Pat, pat, pat. It's like, really? I mean, I don't mind Christmas. In fact, Christmas can be fun. It, it could be enjoyable. But God damn it, stop making it take over all the other goddamn holidays. No, what I don't understand is why would there even be Thanksgiving cards? Is that really a time when we give gifts? Um, Besides food? I don't know. We, I mean... I don't know about y'all's family, but my family, the only ever the only thing we ever gave on Thanksgiving was thanks. Yeah. And and even then it's really just like everybody shut up, I wanna eat. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> I am thankful for the silence so that I may eat turkey and stuffing and gain five hundred pounds. Uh. <laughs> like we just give each other antacids or something, you know? Like is gift giving really a thing on Thanksgiving? Because this to me is is not so much an affront to Christmas, so much as as an affront to thanksgiving like them trying to commercialize it when it it's one of the ones that isn't totally commercialized because we don't give gifts on thanksgiving yeah but we uh, tell you what you need to eat but we don't tell you that you have to give it to somebody and that you should spend your money giving it to people mm -hmm. pretty much but but with all of that said uh there there is one i am going to hold off unless it's something like really stupid or really silly I'm going to hold off on the, any Christmas stories until December. So this one is an exception because this is just kind of silly. They may not be every parent's idea for, of a perfect furry companion for their children, but a company is offering furry rectum and anus toys this Christmas. The anatomically correct furry organs cost £12.50 each on mail order from American firm I Heart Guts and come with amusing facts and even theme songs. By the way, I believe I've heard of I Heart Guts like – of a couple of years ago. Why I, I guess they're just now recently releasing a rectum and anus doll. Uh, the rectum's favorite song is Drop It Like It's Hot by Snoop Dogg. And its job is described as waste disposal. Really? God, the the the, the, the am I, have I shocked you into silence with this? I could have gone my whole life without hearing the story, to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> I don't blame you. I, I, I think a lot of people probably could have. But um, I just – oh, God. The, the, really, the, the pun. The pun, the pun, the puns. So many puns. Oh, God. Oh, and it, it gets even worse. But, but you, know, you know, for your, for your sake, let, let, uh, you know, just – Go to I for your sake. I'm just going to tell everybody. Go to I Heart Guts, look at them, read the descriptions. Oh my God! You can or, slap me later. For your sake, don't do any of that. Yeah. Either way. Yes. If you're a masochist, go do it. If you're not, and you 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 hate puns and whatever, don't do it. <laughs> I, I think that was one of the shortest news stories we've ever we've ever done. Because <laughs> if it had been any longer, we would have had to kill you. 
yes, I, I, I would be dead. Uh, although on the upside, I wouldn't be – Here, here's the thing. On the upside, I would not be boiling in this room. This is like November weather. It, it's practically cool outside. I'm still boiling. What the fuck, Florida? Ah, I blame this room. Oh. But uh, our next one is out of Texas. Texas outlaw, outlaw rather, John Wesley Harden once shot a man for snoring too loudly. But an incident on San Antonio's east side this morning comes close to rivaling that. Kaylin, did you know about this? Uh, police say two men got into an argument shortly after midnight over which of the two is the better wrestler. The argument escalated, and then one man, one of the men pulled a gun, which is certainly against all the rules of wrestling, I swear I did not write that in, and shot the other man in the leg. The victim was hospitalized with non-life-threatening -thre injuries. The guy who won the argument drove away and remains at large. I swear that is how the article was presented. I did not write any of that. Wrestling, apparently, is serious business in San Antonio. So much so that if you lose, the the winner, you know, the loser shoots you, you, you know, you get shot in the leg. If you, if you, but you know, I, I don't even what, yeah, you. I'm thoughts. not a wrestling expert, but I was pretty sure there weren't guns allowed in wrestling. No, there are plenty of things allowed in wrestling. There are chairs, there are tables. Um, you know, you you can do things on the ropes and shit. You can have cage matches. You can have chair ladder matches and shit and, and all, all sorts of weird shit going on, but never guns. At least not in the ring. And it's just... What the hell? And, and, and whoever the article writer is, I don't know whether to say fuck you or give you a hug because that, 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 could be, that is either one of the best written articles ever simply because of the content or one of the articles that makes me want to just punch you in the genitals. You know, just, just, ah! Speaking of wanting to punch people in the genitals, uh, with Thanksgiving coming around, you know what happens the following day. Boy, do I. Yeah, you, you, you work that particular segment of our economy, and and so you know what's going to happen, and we, we are going to, we, 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 when, when the time comes, we will do the appropriate things to make sure that you are safe and you get through safely. Um, and you don't work at Kmart, thankfully, because Kmart will open its doors to Black Friday shoppers on 6 a.m. on Thanksgiving Day and remain open for 42 hours straight, the company announced Monday. That's one hour longer than last year's marathon shopping session. Sears, which, like Kmart, is owned by Sears Holding, Holding Corp., will be, begin its Flack, Flack Friday? Yeah, Black Flack Friday. Friday. <laughs> Flack Friday! Yes, it will begin its Black Friday sales earlier than ever at 6 p.m. on Thanksgiving. Kmart and Sears joined a long list of storage, waging a so-called war on Thanksgiving. Oh, God, it is a war on Thanksgiving at this point, it seems. Forcing millions of low-wage employees to spend their Thanksgiving holidays working. Because fuck their families, right? Uh, a Kmart and Sears spokesperson told the Huffington Post in an email that stores will be staffed by seasonal associates and workers who volunteered to work on the holiday, both of whom will be compensated with <laughs> holiday pay. Yeah, huh? yeah, yeah, volunteered, yeah. It, 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 volunteer in big quotation marks because it's Voluntold. like – Voluntold. Yeah, because if you don't volunteer, well, we just might cut your hours a little bit here and there. Might cut them down to you know maybe five hours a week. One hour a day. You won't be able to feed your family that way. And if I if I had that long mustache, I'd be twirling it right now. Yes, truly yes. irritating. This holiday season is all about giving more to our members, and because many like to start shopping well before Black Friday, we're excited to open our doors early on Thanksgiving and offer other early access opportunities for them to shop and save. Uh, Lena Moon. Munjal, senior vice president for Sears Holdings, said in a statement on the company's website. Kmart certainly isn't the only store open on Thanksgiving. Most Walmart stores will be open all day. Macy says it plans to open at 6 p.m. on Thanksgiving, two hours earlier than last year, and will pay workers time and a half. Meanwhile, Costco and Sam's Club will remain closed on Thanksgiving. Walmart and Sam's Club are owned by the same same people. Why is Shop, one... Shopped by very, very different people. Apparently. Uh 
Last year, Kmart's decision to open at 6 a.m. and remain open for 41 hours, regarding some harsh criticism from sharpers, shoppers rather, who said it was inappropriate to be open all day on the holiday. Guess what? We 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 agree with that because Thanksgiving is supposed to be a day you spend with your families, and if workers can't spend that day with their families, then what's the fucking point? Just so you know, you rich motherfuckers, your richer motherfuckers, can go in and get your get your holiday sales right out of the way. Hmm? How about instead of just one day like that, instead of Black Friday, you spread out those deals? You know, if, if okay, if you're going to go for this whole Christmas taking over both November and December, why don't you spread out the deals to, to compensate for it, okay? You know, start it on November 1st, go to December 24th or 25th, have all of those deals during all of that time, and not concentrated on one fucking day. How about that? Does that, does that sound like a good plan to you? Yeah, just offer better prices all year round. That's even better. Oh, and the store's controversial decision barely paid off. Comparable store sales at Steers and Kmart fell sharply during the holiday season last year. Well, no shit. Sears Holdings has been struggling for a while, and the company is reportedly closing more than 100 underperforming stores and laying off thousands of workers as part of its ongoing effort to generate cash. Ah, ha, ha, ha. That's why the sales on the Thanksgiving and everything, they want more money. They're losing money. Why are they losing money? Well, shit like this doesn't help. That's for sure. Been a while since I've been in a Kmart, but um, I, I, God, it's been too long since I've been in a Kmart. I can't even compare the prices between them and Walmart. That's pretty bad. <laughs> uh, but I'm pretty sure Walmart is doing something better than than Kmart in terms of prices or accessibility, you know. Just saying, you know. Oh God. Yeah. So, do you have any extra thoughts on that? Don't go shopping on Thanksgiving. Don't even participate in fucking Black Friday if you can help it. It it's pretty ridiculous because honestly, retailers don't make a profit that day. Because they spend all of their money um, paying all of their employees. <laughs> yeah. Because literally, it doesn't matter what they say. Everyone has to work that day. Nobody gets out of it. Mm -hmm. Even if they say, oh, it's uh, occasional, seasonal, uh, part-time people who volunteer. No, it's not. It's really not. Yeah. I, I, I managed to get lucky. When I, when I worked at Walmart back in, what was it, 2008, 2009, I got lucky and got in like right after Black Friday, and as, as you know, throughout the year, I, I I had sensed and figured out that yeah, if Black Friday came around, I was not getting out of it unless I was extremely lucky, or if I was so close to being over, you know, going overtime that they would be like, nope, we're we are not we are not that desperate. We're 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 too stingy to be that desperate. So here here is a, a great truth. Um, the Black Friday prices, at least at my work, which I work at Best Buy, those Black Friday pr prices are going to last all weekend. If you want something that is going to be limited quantity, unless you're lining up two or three days in advance, you're not going to get it. If you want to shop Black Friday deals, go on Saturday or s Saturday, Saturday evening, sometime, maybe even Sunday if the prices don't change over on Sunday, like at my work. But you will have plenty of time all weekend. Don't ruin somebody's holiday for it yeah cause, and that and that's the big kicker for me it's like all of these people all the people that are working there they've got families too for the most part they may want to go see their families and spend time with their families on thanksgiving but they can't because they gotta work to keep the families fed because you know they don't pay enough wages you know i want to see a lot of these people especially with kmart I want to see a lot of these workers, you know, most if not all of them, rise up and say, you know what, you don't pay us enough for this bullshit. Fuck you, we're not working. Like, in mass. I want to see that happen. Can we make that happen? Can I we? think somebody should make it happen. Yes, yes. Spread this around, or, or even if you, if you like, download it on the iTunes or whatever, then, then you, you know, you clip that part out and spread it around. If you don't spread that around, any other part of the show. <laughs> you know, just, just do it. Just, just, you know, yeah. You know, start up, start up the uh, Kmart revolution. There we go. My my big beef with it is that it doesn't sound so bad. Six p.m. Thanksgiving, like my family eats at like noon or one. Six p.m. is not that bad, no. except I'm in a food coma. 
Yeah. And now I have to work for 10 to 12 hours. Yeah. Ugh. Because Black Friday shifts are incredibly long. And the longer that the stores decide to stay open, the longer the shifts are. Because mm-hmm. um, there's usually about three waves or so in, in shift changes. Mm-hmm. And, um, and it's not like, oh, 6 o'clock. That's not so bad. No, you have to get there well in advance. You have to be there... At, you know, at least two hours before opening to, to just prepare everything, get everything ready, because a lot of stuff has to get moved out onto the sales floor. Stuff's got to get moved around. Stuff's got to get priced. Um, everything's got to get organized. It, it takes quite a bit of effort to get everything ready. And so there's a lot of work to do before the doors open. Yeah. Uh, just, yeah, I, uh. And because of that, I, I say, you know what? Fuck Black Friday. Like, you, you know, your idea earlier, you know, have those prices like all year round. Do that. You had the, you had the best idea there. Uh, uh, this next one is out of Butter, Texas. Butter. It's like butter. Just like butter. Uh, Hayes County teacher is out of the classroom and facing criminal charges after allegedly telling his students that classmates threatening to shoot up the high school remained at large and the gunman would target bullies first. According to arrest documents, wow, around, yeah, oh, shit. yeah. According to arrest documents, around 1 p.m. Thursday afternoon, in a, Hay- a Hay- Hayes County investigator, I swear I can speak, arrived at Hayes High School to find a string of students lined up outside the office door, waiting on their parents to pick them up early. Parents pulled 130 students, according to the district, despite the fact that before school opened that day, the student who allegedly threatened to shoot and stab an assistant principal was behind bars in Hayes County Jail. Authorities arrested 18-year-old James Archer after students made district officials aware on Wednesday of his threats. Still, students said many at Hayes High School remained panicked, and the sheriff's office contends it was Sanchez's doing. Documents show the criminal justice teacher allegedly told his classes more potential gunmen were on the loose, and if y'all ever bullied somebody else, you're going to be the first ones to go. He reportedly went on to say, if he comes in here and starts shooting, hopefully he'll be out of bullets by the time he finishes with y'all and sees me. Wow! What a douche. Wow. I, I mean, I really like the message of don't bully people because karma, but wow. Yeah, there are, you know, there are better what ways to go. There are better ways to go about it, man. There really are. Holy shit. Uh, just, just, I mean, and, 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 you know, he, depending on who doing, who is doing the shooting, he may be right. He may not be right. But that doesn't mean you should say it in front of a classroom full of students. You just don't do that. You don't do that. Ugh. Goddamn. Dude. Fucking Texas, man. There's there's such thing as a filter. Just because you think it doesn't mean you should say it. Yeah. My my filter is it's not very thick to begin with, but it is there. And there are plenty of things that I may want to say. I keep my mouth shut. Like, I'm not going to go up in front of a classroom full of fifth graders and say, hey, there is no God. Even though, as far as I'm aware, it's true. But they don't need to be hearing that in school from me just barging in there. Let them find it out on their own. Or if they ask me, I will tell them. But it's not my place to go in there and just shout it at them. Because I know if I go in there and just shout it at them, I will get booted off the school. I will probably be be arrested for disturbing the peace because, you know, you barge into a school classroom. You're kind of doing that. And probably try to be run out of town like the pastor whose son got a girl knocked up when they were in high school. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Is, is, is the, did I just... Yes, break you there or or no i'm just like (laughs) why why do people not like think before they speak how do you work with at a school with kids and not have a better filter than that yeah like what what is your thought process that says this is how i talk to children yeah i mean even the kids around here you know for for those if this is your first time listening i I'm, i'm staying here with my parents they have four foster kids and my cousin is here with her two kids and so there are a lot of little kids running around. There are a lot of things I would like to say to some of these little kids, like like uh, one of them. I would love to keep reminding him that he is a spoiled little shit and needs to stop acting like a, a fucking asshole. 
But I can't say that because, well, for one, my mother will bitch at me for cursing. <laughs> at least in front of the children. Um, uh, because, you know, that's the worst thing I could ever do, apparently. Uh, okay, not the worst thing, but yeah. Uh, oh, so speaking of the worst thing you could do, or at least one of the worst things you can do, We've heard of popping some Molly and sweating, but not popping Molly, sort, snorting some coke, carjacking an ambulance, careening every which way through traffic, and then jerking off in the police station. That'd probably make for a better song, though. And uh, just to note that, that there were a couple of things that were in there that were crossed out, like having a seizure and the ambulance that was sent to help you. Um, just to, just for, for full disclosure's sake here. The above scenario was just a night out for a Colorado student, Colorado State student, Stefan Sortland. Sortland took the above-mentioned drugs before heading off to a Halloween party. At some point in the night, Sortland noticed an empty ambulance outside and thought, shit, time for some joyriding. According to police reports acquired by Denver's ABC7, police tracked the vehicle and found it in bad shape. Loveland police officers said they found the ambulance in the middle of Highway 34 with several doors open, heavy front-end damage, and fluid leaking. One officer said it appeared said it appeared the driver of the ambulance had ra hit the raised median, jumped the curb, hit a sign, went the wrong way, and crossed back over the median before stopping. Officer said they found the 18-year-old Stefan Sortland standing about 30 yards from the stop ambulance wearing an EMT vest. Officers shot him with a stun gun when he refused their commands. Sortland had a blanket, a cell phone, and a box of wheat thins with him. Oh, random box of wheat thins. Okay. Hey, wheat thins are delicious. They are. They are. After eventually subduing the 18-year-old, the cops took him back to the station where more hijinks ensued. Oh, dear. Sortland was taken back to the, level, the police department. There he stood on a bench, kicked the wall, and masturbated. <laughs> because that's what you do. Police said during his interview with officers, Sortland made reference that his friend's roommates were dead in heaven and had committed suicide. Somebody better find that kid a better dealer. That was some bad Molly. That last bit was not written by me. Well, okay, the entire article was not written by me, but especially that last part. Though I do agree with that last sentence, that last paragraph there. Yeah, need a better dealer. That was some bad Molly. Just, what? Again, this is another one of the cases of just, wow. Just, what the fuck, dude? <laughs> because, because, you know, that's what you do when you're, when you're arrested. You know, you kick the wall and you start jacking off. Sure, why not? Right? Doesn't everybody do that? I, I, you know, I've, I've never been in that situation, so I would like to think that I wouldn't do it. I don't care if I, you know, what I saw or what I experienced. Uh, if I'm sitting in a police station, masturbation would probably be the furth furthest thing from my mind at that point. First thing in my mind would be, oh shit, Becky is going to kill me. <laughs> uh, that would be the first thing in my mind. Uh, and the last two stories we've got here. Uh, I put them in here because it shows two sides of pretty much the same coin uh, with, with like uh, Christian pastors, pastors and everything. They may have pastures, but they are pastors. Uh, the first one, we start with the bad side. A New York pastor has warned that Starbucks coffees are flavored with the semen of sodomites. Dear um, me. Good gracious. Good Lord. Coffee chain Starbucks recently launched a new ad campaign featuring two well-known drag artists, American Idol star Adora El Delano, Delano and RuPaul's Drag Race winner Bianca Del Rio. Pastor James David Manning of the Atla World Missionary Church in Harlem claimed last week that Starbucks was ground zero for Ebola, which is being spread by upscale sodomites. His remarks sparked a protest in which gay rights advocates handed out free coffee outside his church, which has provoked Manning into another attack on Starbucks. He said in another video rant, he, they had a big bucket of Starbucks coffee. They said that this church was a hate church and that I'm a hate preacher. Citing a satirical news report, satirical news report is what he cited, which he appeared to take seriously, Manning said, Starbucks is a place where these types frequent and a lot of body fluids are exchanged there. The thing that I was not aware of is that what Starbucks is doing is they were taking specimens of male semen, they were putting it in the blends of their lattes. It's the absolute truth. They're using male semen and putting it into the blends of the coffees they sell. My suspicion is that they're getting their semen from sodomites. Semen flavors up the coffee and makes you think you're having a good time. Okay, 
number one, you're getting your sort. You're, you're citing a satirical news report, sir. Do you know what satire is? I don't think he does. I'm I'm a little concerned about how he knows the taste of semen. I I'm not concerned. I know good and well why he knows the taste. Of semen. <laughs> He's probably tasted it. It doesn't concern me a bit. <laughs> but the thing is, is like, oh, what, what is it? What is it? A lot of body fluids are exchanged there. I wish, I wish that Starbucks were just coffee houses that 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 were that were just places where you could just get into an orgy whenever you want for a five dollar entrance fee. That would have been amazing, you know, because I frequented one uh, quite a bit when I first lived in Indy. And you know what happened in there? People came in, they got their coffee, music played. Some people just used the internet all day. I was guilty of it, and that's about it. You know, no orgies happened. Nothing, not, nothing even happened in the bathrooms. It's just, it's, it's just a coffee house. And the fact that he is taking the satirical news report as truth, dude, you, uh, I just have to wonder how sheltered is this guy? I mean, seriously. Oh, 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 and and here's here's the last sentence. Which, oh God. Manning claimed last month that Vladimir Putin is planning to out Barack Obama as a gay man within 100 days. His deadline is next Wednesday, November 12th. So two days after this is posted is when it's supposed to happen. <laughs> I think I, I, I think the guy is just off his rocker. He, he... There's something wrong with these people. There it is. There's just probably all that semen. Probably. Se- semen makes you... Ooh, wait. Oh, well, no, no, no. I was going to say, semen turns you into a conspiracy theorist, but no, because if that was true, we would have a whole bunch of porn stars that were conspiracy theorists. So maybe it's a certain type of semen. Hmm. This this requires research. Maybe. And... Quick, somebody get right on that. Yes. <laughs> yes, somebody research that for us, because uh, I don't think either of us are going to. Ah, and their last story, like I said, um, that one was kind of the bad, the bad side, the crazy side. This one is the good side of, you know, the, the good side of the of the pastoral whatever, and think bad things are happening to him. And uh, well, I'll just read it. By the way, take a shot. It's Florida. Arnold Abbott and two other pastors were arrested by the police last Sunday for feeding the homeless. There is a controversial city ordinance that went into effect last Friday that makes it illegal to feed people in public. Abbott is the head of the group Love Thy Neighbor, which has been feeding people for over 20 years. The three men face up to 60 days in jail for the offense, and Abbott swore the law would not stop him from feeding his fellow man after the incident. Wednesday, he put his money mouth where his money is and went out to feed the homeless. The police stopped him again, and he was cited without arrest. Abbott told Local 10, what the city is doing by cutting out feeding is very simple. They are forcing homeless people to go dumpster diving all over again. They will steal. That's what the mayor is forcing the homeless to do. Mayor Jack Jack Seiler, 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 who supports the ban, told Local 10, Mr. Abbott has decided he doesn't think these individuals should should have to have any interaction with the government, that they should be fed in parks. We disagree. Well, if the government is not... What okay? Tell me, what is the government doing to help feed these individuals, or get them homes, or get them jobs? What is the government doing for them? If it, the government's not doing anything, what do you expect them to do? I mean, you know, I mean, do you do you expect them to just curl up and die because they can't get work, can't get food, can't get shelter or clothing? I mean, I'm pretty sure that's their most optimistic idea is that they really just want these people to go away. And uh, that's not the way it's going to work no. because that's just – you can't assume that homeless people will just go away. They they don't have the ability to just go away. No. See, and, and, and of course, there are like a whole bunch of homes that are just out there not being used, buildings that are not being used that you could use to shelter the, ho- the, the current homeless population. At least most of them, if not all of them, you know, you have you have a rundown. I mean, hell, we have like a couple of rundown uh, sh- outlets downtown, and those could be homeless shelters. I don't think we have like a huge homeless problem here, if any. But you know what? Even if we did, you know, we'll have a place for them. That would that would be ahead of the curve there. Uh, I mean, 
I mean, I saw some homeless people walking around Atlanta when I was going to and from MAGFest, and it's like, you know what? Where the hell can they? Where, where the hell would they be able to go to sleep? Um, you know, barring one of those fucking expensive hotels near downtown Atlanta. I mean, it's like, and 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 here's how bad it is. Okay, I was just passing through. It is cold as balls January in Atlanta. I stepped into a hotel for a moment, you know, to kind of warm up a bit, and asked the guy. Okay, so I told him, look, I'm I'm kind of passing through. I'm, you know, I'm needing to stay out of the cold for a bit because it's cold as balls out there. Um, would I be able to sit in here in the warm? And he's like, no, not unless you're getting a room. And I'm like, and I'm sitting here. I you know I was friendly. I said, yeah, thank you. I walked out and immediately, you know, fuck. I said, fuck, fuck, motherfucker. Because it, it's about money, you know. Yeah, you can't, you cannot, you know. And keep in mind, I'm not a homeless person. I was just passing through. Imagine, you imagine, I'm imagining this guy, and he's, and to be fair, may not be this guy in particular, but more his company. And so, so whatever company that was, I don't even remember the hotel chain it was. Fuck that hotel chain, because it's like, yeah, you got all these people that are out there that just need a warm place to stay, warm place to sleep, or whatever. But no, Ugh. I fucking yeah, I, I I went on a rant a little bit there. Um, yeah, your thoughts, Kat? Um. <laughs> Homelessness is a really huge problem. <laughs> um, it's not something that is just going to go away by creating laws that, like the, these kinds of laws of about don't feed the homeless aren't to try and regulate the homeless better. It's to try to get them to go away, to force them to leave this city and go to another city um, and make it someone else's problem, uh, which I think, I don't know if there's a study or not, but I'll bet anything it doesn't work. Yeah. Um, and to to jail somebody or find somebody for doing the right thing is not the message that you want to send. It is not going to stop people from feeding the homeless. It's just going to make you guys look like a bunch of a-holes. Yeah, just a little bit. And, you know, for all these people, I'm pretty – I'm willing to bet this guy is a Republican and this was put in places by Republicans. I could be surprised. I don't know. But going with that assumption – and saying that they were Republicans and they're the ones that want to to turn America into a Christian nation. Well, guess what your Bible says? Help your fellow fucking man. This pastor is following the word of your religion a lot better than you fuckers are. You fuckers, no, you say you're a Christian nation to get the to get the more gullible, to get the more religious to vote for you. And bear in mind, gullible and religious are not necessarily mutually exclusive. You can be religious without being gullible and the other way around. I just want to clarify before people start flaming arrows at me. So just so we're clear. But they put that on just so they could get the votes to get into office because there is no other way for them to do it apparently. Well, unless they gerrymander the fuck out of everything. <clears throat> but that's a whole different way. They get into office and then they run the thing the way they want to run it and anybody else is wrong. I bet you if they had their way, you know, homosexuality would be outlawed and would be it would be reclassified as a mental disorder. Anybody who is not Christian would either be jailed or outlawed or what have you. You know, that sort of thing. And that's probably more of a slippery slope argument, and I do realize that, but it would not surprise me if that's what one of their big goals for their end game is to turn this into more of a Christian theocracy. Again, I realize slippery slope on my part. I don't know how much of it is right. <laughs> uh, it's just damn. So I, I do want to say, Arnold Abbott, you keep going, sir. Keep doing it. Do what you do. You know what? I if if I had the money myself, I where is this down at? Down at Fort Lauderdale. You know what? I would go down there. I would like buy like. Oh, I don't know. Probably, you know, mm, I'll go with like, you know, they probably have steak and shake down there. Buy like a whole bunch of those uh, steak burgers. Go down there and just give them to every homeless person I see. I'm like, what you going to do? What you going to do? He's going to eat it. He ain't going to, you ain't going to take his food from him. You know, I, I will, you know, I'll do it if I have the money. Give me the money, I'll do it. He's <laughs> just, ugh. Yeah, it sucks not having money. Oh. Uh. But yeah, so that is it for uh, the news. Uh, there is actually I, – I forgot to look at my general notes uh, here before we started on the news. I, I just did so many things out of order. Oh, uh, it's It's been a week, ladies and gentlemen. It has been a week. But there was one thing I did put in my notes that I forgot to cover. 
Uh, we did mention the election, and among the uh, Republicans that were uh, that were elected into uh, office, uh, I think it was I think this particular one is the um, uh, I don't remember which office it was, but um, this is out of Colorado, and the guy's name is Gordon Doctor Chaps Klingenschmidt. I shit you not, that is his last name, Klingenschmidt. Oh, a radical anti-gay religious right activist who brags of having once tried to rid of, rid of woman the foul spirit of lesbianism through an exorcism and who openly proclaims that American law needs to reflect God's law and that our foreign policy must be based on the Bible and he won election to the Colorado House of Representatives. This is who they voted for. They voted for this guy who wants to push America into a theocracy. <sighs> and the foul spirit of lesbianism, guys, I, the spirit of lesbianism, it, it, it's for what, you know, if it were true, it would not be a foul spirit, trust me, because lesbians are awesome. You know, and, 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 you know, there's also the old stereotypical, you know, straight guy being a lesbian in a man's body, ah, ha, 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 you know, that sort of thing. And so, you know, if, if you're going to take those, you know, go with that mindset for a moment. The guys that think, you know, yeah, lesbian in a man's body, sure, whatever, you know, however good or bad or horrible that may be, go with that. So this guy would want to rid you of the foul spirit of lesbianism. So he wants you to not enjoy vagina. He thinks that enjoying the vagina would be a foul spirit if you're going to go with that logic. I don't know. I might be insane troll logic at this point. I don't know anymore. <laughs> I, I swear the tea I'm drinking is not alcoholic. I swear. Ah, but that's just – what the hell? And then this guy also he's, – he's written a book about how President Obama is possessed by demons and once performed an exorcism of Obama, ran an utterly embarrassing campaign, and yet still won by nearly 40 points. An exorcism on Obama. How do you do that? I, I just I just wonder how. Oh. God. Just, just what the fuck? <laughs> oh, I don't know about that. No, I, I especially. Oh, if, a couple of other things, because if, if you want to find it, it's on a rightwingwatch.org. Um, a couple of other things that he is uh, that they're saying he said is uh, he has declared that judges who strike down gay marriage bans are imposing the devil's law upon people and are deceiving people into hell, warning that these rulings will eventually be overturned by Jesus, who will send all gay people to hell. Well, what if it comes out later that you're gay, sir? Because we don't know. You could be. Well, we kind of do now. Yeah, quite possibly. And um, yeah, so maybe. And imposing the devil's law upon people. Right, because giving people equal rights and equal opportunities under the law is imposing the devil's law upon people. That's that's an imposition, right? Yeah, uh-huh. Yeah, saying that you can't be a dick to somebody is imposing law upon people. No, what you want to do, you again, you want it to be a theocracy, and you want to have the legal right that to to just not only impose your religion upon other people, but impose your religion's punishments upon other people. I'm pretty sure this is the kind of guy, if he could get away with it, he would have probably stoned Matthew Shepard. Yes, I went there. He's only one state away. Uh Oh, just oh, – and let's see. He's declared that the don't ask, don't tell policy should never have been repealed since gay soldiers cannot serve effectively in combat because they are constantly taking breaks on the combat field to change diapers all because their treacherous sins causes them to lose control of their bowels. Oh, god damn it. Another one of these guys? <sighs> really? How do, how do these people exist? I don't understand how these people haven't done something so dumb that they're just dead from it. How? How? Ah. Uh... Oh, and of course, he also proclaims that those who are not welcome in the church should not be entitled to use public restrooms. Dude! What, what the f fuck? What the fuck, dude? I just, just, ugh. What do you expect them to do? Okay, use public restrooms or shit there on the street. You know what? If, if, let, let, you know, I probably at this point would not be welcome in your church, sir. And if this was law, where would you want me to shit? In my pants? No. You know where I would shit? I would shit right on your doorstep. Ding dong and ditch it. There you go. Let you step in it. See how you like it. Now, can we use the public restroom? Yes? Good. Ah. Oh, oh, and, and, and this one, this is going to be the last bit before we go. I, 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 
If somebody hasn't sent it, I'm going to send it over to Josh Hadley to see what he says about it. Oh, uh, because I, I think he would have a field day with this too. Gays, he says, have something inhuman and demonic inside of them, which is why he declares that teaching kids about gay marriage is, get this, mental rape. And advocates for Christians to print anti-gay Bible verses on the backs of gay wedding photos. M mental <laughs> rape. Dude! You, you There's no such thing. There's mental abuse. And that's a real thing. There's psychological abuse, and that's a real thing. Mental rape is just something that you invent to fear monger, you fear mongering fuckheads. Yeah, it's just, ah, you, oh, I, I can't even go on. But, but, but rest assured, I am saying this on the show. Josh Hadley, if you are listening, you will, you will have this in your inbox by the time this goes up. So you'll, you'll already know it, and you'll be like, yeah, I already sent it to you. So. Uh, yeah, because <laughs> I cannot be the only one to talk about this. Oh, dear. <laughs> and, and, and watch me be surprised he's already seen it. Because, uh, of course he is. Oh, so with that, um, don't want to... Oh, God, time is almost up. I don't want to end it on a bad note. Um, um, good note, good note, good note. Do we have a good note? Do we have a good note to end this, this show on? Do we? Um, uh, okay, um, Kat, what's well, something positive that happened to you this week? I didn't really have anything. Ah, god damn it. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> it was a not great week. Ah, damn it. Okay. Um, okay, so for me, something positive, something positive. Um, I've actually got my my next review almost done. Just got to get the movie clips together. I got some editing done. So, okay, there's positivity for you. Want to end the show on the positive note. Um, and oh, oh, speaking of things that have changed over the past week. <laughs> I did. I did forget to mention at the beginning of the show that uh, if 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 you heard, you, we got some new audio bumpers done by uh, this this lovely woman right here. So um, you know, and and by the way, this lovely woman being my current co-host, Cat. By the way, uh, so she she was very very kind enough to uh, per, to do the voiceovers for this, and I I do want to thank her again, like right here on the air because they are awesome. <laughs> Yes, and that means I don't have to ramble as much in my sign-off, <laughs> which which is great. So, um, But before I do my sign-off, uh, where can we find you on the social medias? You can find me at Twitter on Twitter at LabyrinthCat and Facebook.com slash NerdistCat, and then you can also find me on 1201 Beyond uh, on What the Fuck, and then my other, 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 other show, Nerd to the Third Power, on That Guy with the Glasses, onto the podcast tab. Sweet! And me... You can find me on social media at uh, Gomer21XX. That's Twitter, Tumblr, pretty much anywhere you plug that in, you're going to find me. And, uh, well, everything else is going to be in the audio bumper right after this. So I don't have to speak. I don't have to go on with that. Although there is one thing that is not in the audio bumper. I am, I am going to be having a 24-hour fundraising stream on November 13th, starting at noon central time. Go for 24 hours, and the funds will be basically just helping me get to, uh, you know, get to Magfest um, and and other travel things. There's a GoFundMe page set up. There's going to be a link in the description. All of that good stuff uh, that will give you all the details necessary. Uh, five every five dollars, you'll get a raffle ticket. You know, an entry into the raffle that I'm going to be having. Um, you know, for several prizes, there's like games, artwork, a DVD here and there. So uh, all that, all that's going to be in, in entry and, and everything down there. So uh, go check it out if if you can. You know, great. I, I would be very much appreciated. If not, spread it around. Um, so yeah, that's it. Uh, thank you guys for listening, and we will catch you next time. And until then, this is Gomer, the ranting thespian, with a cat, signing off. Thespian Talk is an RT Gomer Productions presentation. Our show's theme is Kick Shock by Kevin McLeod. Find out more at Incompetech.com. If you like this show and want to help support future episodes, head over to Patreon.com slash Gomer21XX. For a contribution as little as a dollar per production, you can get early access to all future productions, as well as monthly Patreon-only vlogs and announcements. Our show's artwork was produced by the talented Becky Hopkins, who can be commissioned by going to Patreon.com slash Becky Hop. Check us out on iTunes or visit rtgomer.com for more great shows.